Financial literacy is one of the most important skills to learn in today's world. However, it's not one that's always thoroughly talked about in schools, though we are slowly but surely improving on that front as time has gone along. However, that's not going to be of much help to those of us who have already left school. Thankfully, the proliferation of blogs, podcasts, YouTube channels, and other outlets have given people easy ways to learn more about finance outside of the traditional education system. Today, let's talk about just how big of a difference becoming financially literate and increasing your financial intelligence can be for your life. But before we get going, be sure to like this video if you haven't already, as it really does help out the channel a lot, and subscribe with notifications on for more money-related videos like this one every single week. So before we get into the example, what is financial literacy? The dictionary definition would define financial literacy as the possession of the set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make an informed and effective decision with all their financial resources. In more plain English, it's the ability to figure out which financial decisions are the most likely to lead you to achieving your financial goals, and then having the ability to act on that knowledge. So how do we become financially literate? Well, assuming that you didn't get enough financial education in school, you'll need to take things into your own hands. You do this by exposing yourself to new ideas from as many different people and perspectives as you possibly can. Read books, take classes, watch videos like you're doing right now, or look at blogs related to money. Any of these can have a very positive effect on your financial situation, both in the present and in the future. They can introduce you to new ideas that you may or may not have actually come across on your own, and these ideas may lead you to saving or making more money, or even finding new passions, which is also good. These outlets can reassure you during uncertain times that the world isn't actually coming to an end and this too shall pass. These outlets can also give you encouragement when things are actually going well and help keep you motivated to continue working towards your goals. But perhaps most importantly, especially if you're just starting out and didn't get much financial education when you were growing up, these outlets can introduce you to so many possibilities that get you excited about researching finance for yourself. This will get you thinking about what you can accomplish in your own life with your own resources. So one last thing I want to mention before getting into the example showing the difference financial literacy can make, let's discuss some statistics relating to the average American's budget. I should note that some light rounding has been done, but this should give us a general idea of what the typical American spends money on. So according to data gathered by the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Expenditure Survey, the average American household spends almost $20,000 a year on housing costs. These costs include mortgage and rent payments, of course, but also utilities, maintenance and repairs, property taxes, and other related fees. The median price of a home is approximately $300,000 nationwide, though that obviously does vary quite a bit from location to location. The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment nationwide is $950 a month. Two-bedroom apartments will run close to $1,200 a month, as will the average overall apartment. Transportation is the next largest category, and it costs the average American about $9,000 annually. These costs include fuel, maintenance, repairs, public transit, plane tickets, and other related transportation expenses. Groceries cost us about $4,000 a year, while dining out costs an additional $3,150. That means that our total food costs are on average a little over $7,000 a year, with almost half of it going to eating out. Healthcare costs about $4,600 a year, and that includes health insurance as well as prescription medication, doctor's visits, and other health-related expenses. We spend around $2,500 a year on personal care and clothing. And I've gotten a couple of questions about the clothing costs in my previous videos, so I should mention the clothing portion of this $2,500 a year expense also includes related services such as tailoring and dry cleaning. It's not just strictly the clothes we buy. We spend almost $3,000 a year on various forms of entertainment like cable, concerts, movies, and subscription services. And insurance costs can vary widely depending on your level of coverage and what type of insurance you're looking for, but some rough averages are $180 to $200 a year for renter's insurance, about $1,000 to $1,100 a year in homeowner's insurance, term life insurance on average is around $2,000 a year, while whole life insurance policies can be upwards of $5,000 a year on average. However, like I said, those can vary quite a bit depending on what you're looking for. And finally, giving and miscellaneous expenses amount to about $2,000 and $1,000 a year respectively. The reason I bring these statistics up is 
it's what we're going to be basing most of the expenses of our first couple on, so that we have something to compare to when we talk about financial intelligence. So, in this example, we're going to be looking at two couples who have just graduated from high school. They're both looking to start college at the end of this upcoming summer. They'll both be starting with no debt to speak of, and will work all summer before starting school. They'll both earn the same amount of money from their jobs before, during, and after school, and in both cases, they'll be earning $12 an hour from their summer and school jobs. Once they graduate, they will both have $60,000 a year in household income from their salaries. As for other expenses, they will each be getting new cars once every seven years. Our first couple will be buying cars new, while the other will be getting cars that are used. Both couples will be getting homes, but our first couple will be lucky enough to receive a full down payment as a gift from their parents, while our second couple will have to save for the down payment themselves. Where saving money is concerned, both couples will try to have enough money on hand to purchase their next cars outright. However, as you'll see, this won't be possible every single time. The down payment money will also go into savings for our second couple. The money that we put into savings will earn 2.5% in interest. The rest of the money that doesn't need to be spent or saved will be invested. Money invested will have returns of 8% per year on average. There will also be a dollar for dollar match for the first $1,800 a year invested. This equates to roughly 3% of our couple's starting salaries. The net worth of each couple will be determined by how much they have saved and invested, and it will not include the value of their homes, though I will mention those separately at the end. And with that out of the way, let's get into the example and see just how big of a difference even a little extra financial intelligence can make in our lives. Bill and Mary have just graduated from high school and are looking to go to college. As I mentioned, they will work the summer after graduating high school and during college for $12 an hour. During the summer, they will work full time and during the school year, they'll be able to work 20 hours per week. Therefore, Bill and Mary make about $10,000, give or take, the summer before college, and about $31,200 a year combined while going to school. Once Bill and Mary graduate, they will get new jobs and pay $30,000 a year, for a total household income of $60,000 annually. Bill and Mary attend four-year universities in-state, which cost them about $25,000 per year to attend. These numbers are based on averages gathered by ValuePenWin.com. The $25,000 a year includes all tuition, fees, books, and other expenses relating to their education. Between food, transportation, and occasional fun nights out, Bill and Mary spend an additional $850 a month, so in total, they're spending just about $60,000 a year while in school. Four years go by, and unfortunately for Bill and Mary, they racked up a lot of student loan debt. All told, they will graduate with over $100,000 in student loans that they need to pay back. Assuming a roughly average 4.5% interest rate on their student loans, their minimum payments will amount to over $1,000 a month combined. After graduating college, Bill and Mary's budget looks similar to the average American budget in most respects. They spend about $20,000 a year in housing costs, $9,000 in transportation, $4,600 in healthcare, $2,500 in clothing and personal care, a little over $7,000 for food and dining out, and about $1,000 for miscellaneous expenses. In total, they basically spend everything they make. However, there are still a few other things worth noting. First is their insurance bill. They will spend about $6,000 a year for all of their insurance, and this is because they have a whole life insurance policy, pay homeowners insurance, and have two cars that need to be insured. Another thing to notice is that they aren't doing any charitable giving, saving, or investing because they frankly can't afford to with their other expenses. Lastly, their entertainment budget is near enough zero. They had to cut that in order to make their debt payments each month. So unless they're to find some other source of income, or slash their current expenses somehow, this is likely going to be how they live for the next several years. Looking forward, we see at the age of 33, Bill and Mary's student loans are finally paid off. As a result, their expenses will drop to about $50,500 a year. This also means that they can finally start to increase their entertainment budget. And just like most of the other things in their budget, I'm going to assume that from this point forward, they spend right about the American average of $3,000 a year on entertainment. 20 years later, at the age of 53, their home is paid off, which drops their housing costs significantly. Based on their $240,000 mortgage, remember they got the down payment from their parents, and assuming a 3.85% interest rate, for a 30-year loan, Bill and Mary's annual expenses will then fall to about $39,750 a year. 
40 years after graduating from high school, Bill and Mary will have a paid off home, they will no longer be financing their cars, and they'll have a liquid net worth of $75,000. Additionally, they bought their home for $300,000 with the help of their parents 34 years ago. They haven't moved since, which is pretty unusual, but it certainly has helped them financially. Because assuming the value of their home grew by 3% each year, their home would be worth about $820,000 today. So between their savings, investments, and home, they're worth a whopping $895,000. That's pretty good considering they carried so much debt that they couldn't save very much for the first several years of their career. But how much better could they have done if they played their cards a little differently? Let's find out by comparing them to John and Jane. John and Jane may not have all the answers, but they have researched personal finance and investing. They've learned enough to make some different choices than Bill and Mary did. The first difference comes in the form of where they go to school. Bill and Mary, of course, graduated high school and went straight to a four-year university. Thankfully, it was at least an in-state school. John and Jane, though, decide to get their first two years done at a local community college, because as it turns out, this is a lot cheaper. According to that same data from Value Penguin, the average cost of a community college is about $4,800 per year, all things considered. Therefore, John and Jane will be spending about $9,600 per year between the two of them for their first two years of school. They can then transfer to a four-year university to complete their bachelor's degree, just like Bill and Mary did. To keep things consistent, we'll assume this will cost them the same $25,000 per year per person. In total, between the two of them, their college education will set them back almost $120,000. That's certainly a lot, but it's far more manageable than the nearly $200,000 that Bill and Mary spent on their education. Assuming their non-education expenses and incomes were the same as Bill and Mary, John and Jane would graduate with about $20,000 in student loan debt. However, this is where we see a second difference between the path that Bill and Mary took and the one John and Jane are taking. John and Jane noticed that their salaries weren't going to be enough to pay for their college in full, so they decided to start researching how to make more money outside of a job. They learned about side hustles and eventually started one where they flip items on places like the Facebook Marketplace for a profit. They net about $12,000 a year from this side hustle, and since it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of time, they decide that they'll continue doing it after graduation, as the extra cash flow can never hurt. John and Jane graduate and get jobs that pay them a combined $60,000 a year. With their side hustle, this makes their household income about $72,000 annually. However, the differences between John and Jane's working life and that of Bill and Mary's doesn't stop there. John and Jane want to supercharge their finances while they're young and able to get the most out of compounding interest. There's also something to be said about spending more of their money on the things they care most about. As a result, they decide to save on big-ticket items like housing and transportation. Unlike Bill and Mary, John and Jane didn't have parents that could give them a down payment to buy a house right after graduating college. However, they still want to keep their housing costs down, so they find some roommates, just like they had in college, and get an apartment with them. As I said earlier, the average rent for a two-bedroom apartment nationwide is a little under $1,200 a month. If we assume that John and Jane split the costs evenly with their roommates, and also assume that the utilities and other apartment-related expenses adds another $400 a month onto the total housing costs, then John and Jane's portion of those costs would be about $800 a month. $800 a month in housing costs is about $9,600 a year. That's about $10,000 less than the typical American pays for their housing. To save money on transportation, John and Jane buy one car used for the two of them, and they buy it with cash. This will mean that they have to look for carpooling options to work, either with coworkers or by taking turns dropping each other off, or by getting a place that's close enough to one of their jobs that they can just bike to work, but for now, that's okay with them. The next time they're shopping for cars, they can decide to get one for each person. But this strategy accomplishes a couple of things. First, they only have one car to repair and maintain. And second, they only have one car to pay insurance on. Statistically speaking, the average American household has about 2.6 cars. So I don't think it's beyond belief that John and Jane could cut their transportation costs in half using this strategy. With the insurance and transportation savings, this strategy keeps approximately $5,000 a year more in John and Jane's pocket compared to Bill and Mary. The last strategy John and Jane used to save money is to limit the amount of times they eat out. As I said, the average American spends over $3,000 a year eating out, and $4,000 on groceries. By limiting their dining out expenses, John and Jane cut their total food costs down to $5,000 a year. While most of the money John and Jane saved with these strategies goes towards investments, some will go towards savings and other things. 
John and Jane will need to save about $20,000 every seven years to pay for their new cars, and will need about $60,000 for a down payment on their future $300,000 home. The home will be on a 15-year mortgage with an interest rate of 3.3%, and this is because the interest rates on 15-year mortgages are generally lower than the interest rates on 30-year mortgages. The monthly payment, though, will be just shy of $1,700 a month, so quite a bit higher than a 30-year mortgage. But it'll allow John and Jane to get out of that debt much quicker. We had Bill and Mary get their home right out of college at the age of 23. John and Jane will get their house at the age of 27, since that's when they would have saved up enough money to make the down payment. They will also rent out their unused rooms to help offset the cost of housing. Their rental income is going to be $500 a month in this example. John and Jane will be spending $1,700 a year on entertainment, which is the average American's entertainment budget minus the average expense of cable. They'll be giving $2,000 a year to causes they believe in, and also will be investing $2,000 a year towards their kid's college fund, starting when he or she is born and continuing until he or she turns 18. The investments will be in an ESA for their son or daughter, since that will allow them to withdraw the money tax-free for college expenses. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to assume that their child is born in the year they move into their new home. Everything else will be kept the same as it was in Bill and Mary's example. So based on this scenario, John and Jane would have their home paid off by the time they turn 43. This will lower their annual expenses by about $20,400 a year. Two years later, their son or daughter will graduate from high school with over $80,000 sitting in his or her college fund. This means that John and Jane no longer need to save money into the ESA, which will lower their annual expenses by an additional $2,000 a year. And as a result, 40 years after John and Jane graduated high school, they have a paid off home, a kid who has graduated college, mostly, if not entirely debt free, and a whopping $4,500,000 to their name. In addition to that, their home was originally valued at $300,000 when it was bought 30 years ago. Assuming the value of their home also grew by 3% per year, just like Bill and Mary's did, it would be worth approximately $728,000 today. So between their savings, investments, and home, John and Jane are worth a whopping $5,228,000. That's over five times the net worth that Bill and Mary ended up with. And John and Jane have set themselves up for a sweet retirement. Based on the 4% rule, their $4.5 million would give them a $180,000 a year income for the rest of their life. And this was all achieved with just a few changes to the average American budget. The first is some form of house hacking. The second is temporary transportation hacking. The third is looking at the entertainment budget and cutting those things that aren't worth the cost, which for John and Jane was cable. The fourth, of course, is investing in your children's education, which may or may not apply to everyone. The fifth was waiting to buy a home until you're able to afford it, and making sure that you're not burdened with that kind of debt for 30 years. That's how important becoming a little more financially literate can be. And that's why I, and so many others like me online, try to teach it. We're very fortunate here in America. We can live a pretty comfortable life even if our decisions aren't ideal, or if we just got a late start like Bill and Mary did with their savings. But we also have an amazing opportunity to set ourselves up for an extraordinary life, both now and in the future, if we take the time to learn about how money works and how we want to work with money. But that'll do it for me today. Once again, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video as it really helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to learn more about how to work with money, be sure to check out my video on the values-based budget with the link on your screen. And as always, thanks for watching.